Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning back in. Today's topic comes from a random conversation I had yesterday with a, a teenager who lives in the area. He was telling me how he was having difficulty fishing the local river here. I live right on the Wisconsin River and it's kind of where I cut my teeth. I love river fishing. It's something I've uh, really had a lot of really good success doing, and I feel like I've got a really good understanding of rivers in general. And so the, the uh, young angler that I was talking to was just telling me how he was struggling with catching fish. So I just started talking with him and asking questions about what he was doing. And really what I, what I realized was he was approaching it as if it was a lake. Now, we do have lake sections of this river stretch that I live on. It's a it's technically a flowage, but it really is truly just the river. It's got a lot of good flow year round. It does have some wider areas with backwaters where you can get out of uh, the current flow, but he was approaching it as if it was a lake and you can't really do that. You need to approach it as a river if there is good current flow coming through that body of water. So, you know, after talking with him, I gave him a bunch of tips and pointers, and I think he's going to do much better now because he's going to be doing what he should probably have been doing and not doing what he had been doing. So that led me to thinking about this video. I think there's probably a lot of other individuals that uh, don't have much experience fishing rivers or find fishing rivers intimidating because of the current. So I want to talk about five key things you need to know when you're fishing rivers. You know, I think that's, uh, if you know these five things, it'll give you a much better starting ground as to how to approach a fishery. So the first is that because of the fact that it's a river, it's driven by current. No matter what time of year, it is all about current flow. You know, it's, it's in the spring and winter months, a lot of times it's about lack of current flow, and in the summer, it's about finding the current flow. So you need to realize that in the cold winter months, the majority of fish populations will do one of two things. They will get out of the current flow and move into slack backwater areas. That's like your largemouth, your uh, bluegill, most crappie do that. Other species will move into the current, but they'll move into deep holes to get out of it. You know, that'll be like your walleye, um, sturgeon, species like that will stay right in the current flow, but will not, you know, will be out of it because they're in a deep hole. So you got to you gotta recognize what species you're after and how they relate to the current. In the summer months, most species are attracted to the current flow. Yes, you can fish, you can catch fish way in the backwaters that are slack water, but almost every species in that river will be attracted to the current in one way or another. Uh, so that's, that's a key you have to realize. When targeting most species, one of the best things to do is look for eddies. They are the most classic river structure that you can find and if you're fishing for any sort of game fish, an eddy is a great place to look. And eddies can be created from uh, rocks, log jams, sandbars, uh, channel swings. You know, any anything that deflects the current will create some sort of eddy. So I recommend starting there. That's like the most typical river fishing spot you can find is to find eddies. You know, any sort of current break. And it could be something that's the size of a basketball or it could be you know something that is a hundred yards long but that's which that's where you should probably start because that's the easiest place uh, that concentrates the most fish it's your easiest river target when doing that or when looking for current if you're talking about channel swings or outside bends or inside bends the number two thing i want to tell you is there's going to be Two key places to look on every channel swing or, or, or river bend, and that's the upstream portion of that bend and the downstream portion. So on the upstream, you're going to be looking for where that current is getting pinched the hardest against that shoreline. So at some point on that beginning of that outside bend, 
there will be a point where the current is hitting the hardest. That's where the majority of the fish are gonna be. And the same goes for the downstream side. When the majority of that current that's coming around that bend leaves the bank, that's gonna be the second best place. So those are the two main places to look. If you're fishing a big bend and you don't get bit on those two areas, chances are you're probably not gonna get bit in the middle, at least not to a point where it's gonna be you know, a great spot. You may pick up a fish or two, but generally the best spots or where the current hits on the top side and leaves on the bottom side. You gotta keep that in mind. The current flow on an outside bend is not gonna be the same throughout that entire outside bend. The next, when you're dealing with falling and rising water levels, that moves the fish all over the place. <clears throat> so if you're dealing with rising water levels, what happens is you get more increased current flow and generally, the fish, because they don't want to exert a ton of energy, are going to move closer to the shoreline. That strong current flow basically pushes them to the shoreline because a lot of the bait gets moved away and that the game fish just follow that. So, you know, if you're dealing with bass, you definitely want to move tighter to the shore in higher water levels. When you've got increased current, you get increased water levels, the fish are going to be tight to the bank. Generally, that's the rule of thumb. In falling water levels, it's the complete opposite. The fish are going to pull off that bank and they will not be as tight to the bank. They may fall all the way back to the main river channel. And really, that just has to do with them trying to be opportunistic and want to use that lower water, lower current flow to their advantage to feed. So you got to keep that in mind, guys. If you've got falling water levels, the fish may not be tight to the bank. Rising water levels, fish the bank. So that's a main thing you want to keep in mind. And that's almost all species. I mean, I can tell you on the river where I live, the, the walleye, the sturgeon, when the water rises, you catch them much closer to the bank. When the water is dropping, they will slide back closer to the deeper holes in the main river, and they'll be way out more in the center of the river channel. So you want to, be, you want to realize that that current is pushing them. The next thing has to do with seasonal movements. Like I talked about, you want to, you need to recognize where those fish are going to be. But the main driving force in that movement is water temperature, guys. On rivers, you have significantly more water temperature fluctuation than you would on a, on a normal lake or a, you know, a, a, a bigger reservoir. You will have potentially you know, especially up here in the north part of the country, you could have 40 degree main channel water and 70 degree backwater, you know, water temperatures. That is such a huge fluctuation that that moves the fish around. And that really goes back to what I was saying before. Depending on the species you're after, in, you know, certain times of the year, they're going to be in certain places. And generally, that's based on just straight water temperature. So when fishing rivers, you need to recognize that water temperature plays a much bigger role than on, on normal bodies of water. Uh, I just, I, it's unbelievable to me how you could be cracking, you know, large mouth on top water baits like it's a summer day, a few days after ice out. It just, it's that way because those backwaters warm up so fast. The last thing to keep in mind, point number five, is you can never fish current that is too strong. If you're in current where it's hard to position your boat or it's hard to, hard to, you can't even move upstream in the current, the fish are still using that, especially in the summer months, especially if you're talking about smallmouth, you cannot find current that's too strong. You can find current that's too strong to take your boat up it on a trolling motor, but those fish are always using it. So don't think that you're fishing current that's too strong. And anytime you're fishing current, guys, you need to make sure your batteries are good. The last thing you wanna do is get out on a river and spend the day fishing current and find out an hour and a half or two hours later, your batteries are dead or they're draining and that'll ruin a day. Because especially in the summer, you need to be near that current. So, you know, I I recommend, I'm wearing the shirt right now, Battleborn batteries, the best lithium batteries I've ever used. I'll run all day long on rivers on high power and I could go for two days without ever having an issue. 
That's what you need when you're fishing a river. You do not want to have bad batteries. So whatever batteries you're using, guys, make sure they're fully charged and make sure they're good batteries. Because if you want to mess with rivers and be productive and, and safe at the same time, if you have bad batteries, I mean, sometimes the current can whip you into trees and just destroy your equipment. So you want to make sure you've got good batteries to be out there in those elements that rivers produce. So guys, I'm telling you, if you head out to fish a river, and this is across the country, this works, you need to know these basics like I just pointed out. You need to know eddies are your primarily primary place to start. You need to re recognize the fish movements based on the season that you're in and that that's usually driven by water temperature. You need to recognize whether you're fishing rising or falling water level and that you've never fishing current that's too strong. So guys, use those tips as a guideline next time you go out on the water, and I guarantee you, you will catch more fish. I hope this was helpful. Hit the like button if it was. Subscribe to the channel if you have not done so already. Stay tuned for tomorrow's tip. Tips coming out every day, guys. Thanks for watching.